Hi, it's Katrina. Right hand of St. John the Baptist. John the Baptist lived during the first century and is considered a prophet among numerous religions, including Christianity and Islam. While some early followers considered him to be the Messiah, John the Baptist not only foresaw the coming of Jesus, but baptized him as well, according to the Gospels of the New Testament. John the Baptist was sentenced to death and beheaded in 30 AD under the orders of the ruthless Roman King Herod, and his body was buried at the city of Sebaste in what is now the West Bank. As the legend goes, when Luke the Evangelist passed through Sebaste during his travels preaching in various cities and towns, he took the right hand of John the Baptist with him. He brought it to his home city of Antioch in modern-day Turkey, where it allegedly performed miracles and moved on its own. Every September during the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, the hand was presented to worshippers. An open hand predicted a bountiful harvest, while a closed hand warned of a poor harvest. After the Muslims seized Antioch, the relic was transported from place to place, eventually ending up in Constantinople in 956 AD, where the annual ritual of displaying the hand to the public continued. Today, pieces of the hand are rumored to be at cathedrals and churches in various countries, including Montenegro and Greece. Which of these claims are authentic, and where exactly it is, are ongoing topics of debate among the devout. The Spaghetti Monster While spending time with her family at Mustang Island State Park in Texas recently, beachgoer Jennifer Baltazar spotted what she described in a social media post as creepy, eyeball-looking creatures along the shore. They were like nothing she'd seen before, so she snapped pictures in hopes that someone would be able to identify the strange specimens. Wildlife officials were stumped, and a marine biologist was equally surprised. The mysterious life form was eventually identified as Rhizophyza eisenharti, more commonly known as spaghetti monsters or thread jellies, a siphonophore species that's related to the Portuguese man o' war. Uh oh! Native to the tropical waters of the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, spaghetti monsters are rarely seen in the region. Baltazar said that she believed one of the small creatures stung her eight year old son who frantically emerged from the water in pain. He was reportedly okay and toughed it out, but he had moderate pain and burning, which lasted for around 20 minutes, and he had no interest in going back into the ocean. Who can blame him? That doesn't sound pleasant. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Or have you ever been stung by a sea creature? Let me know in the comments below. Hidden Bomb Shelter The internet has seen its fair share of creepy discoveries inside people's homes thanks to TikTok. In March, California resident Jennifer Little documented the discovery of a hidden bomb shelter beneath her home and shared footage of the experience with her followers. Revealing the secret room in three separate clips, she explained that she discovered a manhole cover on her bedroom floor while rearranging the furniture. That's pretty creepy. The spooked woman sent her husband in to investigate. Yeah, you go in, honey. I'll be right behind you. Would you go inside? Let me know in the comments below. He braved the unknown and found a filthy Cold War-era shelter that appeared to have been built during the 1950s. The bunker is ventilated and contains two bunk beds, a urinal, cabinets, and wall hooks, and is attached to a newly discovered dry room. As eerie as the discovery may seem, Little ultimately shrugged it off as no big deal, knowing that her house was built in 1951 as the Cold War heated up and Americans became increasingly concerned about the prospect of nuclear warfare, especially in Central California where she lives, she pointed out that having a bomb shelter was pretty normal for back then. Is it though? Under your bedroom floor? I don't know, that's pretty scary. New Spider Species A zookeeper at Zoo Miami was taken aback in 2012 when they discovered a large black spider while tending to reptile research traps. Much to the surprise of the zoo's conservation and research department, photos of the creature did not match existing records of any known species in the region. The mystery endured until two years later, when another specimen was captured and sent to experts for identification. Dr. Rebecca Godwin, a biology professor at Piedmont College in Georgia, recently wrote a paper describing the spider as a previously unknown member of the Omidia genus. The new species, dubbed Umidia richmond, or the Pine Rockland Trapdoor Spider, lives in the critically endangered Pine Rockland forest that surrounds the zoo. The Pine Rockland Trapdoor Spider is venomous, inflicting a bite that feels similar to a bee sting. Females are thought to be two to three times larger than males, who are roughly the size of a quarter. Females of similar species are known to live for as long as 20 years, making them some of the longest-lived spiders on record. 
They spend their entire lives in the same burrow, awaiting passing prey and typically only leaving to mate or seize their next meal. Males burrow for up to seven years before leaving to mate and die shortly thereafter. Over the last 35 years, staff members have only encountered a handful of these creatures, pointing toward their likelihood of being just as endangered as their fragmented native habitat. 19th Century Tunnel When Alton, Illinois resident Gary Machins noticed the sidewalk outside his home starting to slope, he decided to try to fix it. While digging, he noticed an opening to an underground tunnel that he had no idea was there. The structure is estimated to date back to around 1840, making it 50 years older than Machin's house, and it's noticeably well-built. Speaking with Fox 2 Now, Machin's remarked that it took a lot of men and a lot of hours to build the tunnel, adding that one guy didn't do this. The tunnel could have served numerous purposes, including as a storage space or even as a part of the Underground Railroad. Machins explained that there was once a ferry in Alton that carried passengers to Missouri, which may have made the area an integral part of a path that escaped slaves used to reach freedom. It appears as though the tunnel was covered in 1895, when local residents laid brick along the street to accommodate a change in elevation. While Machins hopes to eventually open the mysterious space up for public viewing with financial backing from the local government, for now he is focused on sealing the entry back up so he can fix the sidewalk. Ancient Shark most people would agree that sharks are fascinating but creepy, if not scary. But modern species don't hold a candle to some of the ancient sharks that once lurked in the world's oceans, and which qualify as downright terrifying. Around 370 million years ago in what is now Morocco, sharks called chondrichthyans were equipped with specialized jaws that could drop downward and rotate outward, making it easier to catch prey. Because sharks are cartilaginous, there are very few surviving fossilized examples. In a recently published study, researchers gained access to a rare, well-preserved specimen, which they used as a reference in combination with 3D models and a reconstructed jaw to simulate the mechanics of how the sharks ate. In addition to being able to jet each half of its jaw out in seemingly unnatural ways, these marine predators were also able to suction feed thanks to their strange anatomy. By protruding their jaws outward, they cause seawater to rush into their mouth, trapping and immobilizing the prey, according to lead study author Linda Frey. If this rotating jaw was so efficient, why is it absent from today's species? The team theorized that tooth replacement became more advantageous, eventually rendering the rotating jaw obsolete and causing it to disappear through evolution. A City of Secret Spaces Last October, new homeowner Andrea Munro discovered a hidden room in her basement in the city of St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. She told CBC's Andy Bullman that she found the space while trying to see where some pipes led, and that it wasn't in the blueprints for the house, which was built in 1957. The room is connected to a corner of the basement via a hidden entrance and has cement walls lined with wooden shelves. Munro has no idea what it was meant for, but believes it's an unfinished Cold War era bunker, which she described as cool and a little creepy. Cold War bunkers aren't unheard of in St. John's, and Munro's house falls into the appropriate time period for one, according to heritage home expert Shane O'Day, who spoke with CBC. He pointed out that the city has numerous other types of secret spaces, including unused coal chutes and hidden rooms that were ultimately sealed off or boarded up. Local resident John Navarro realized after a year of living in his apartment that it contained one such space. While looking up at his home from outside, he noticed a second-story window that did not match up with the layout of the rooms. Overcome with curiosity, Navarro scaled the building and peered inside, where he saw a mysterious, unused room. The only way in was from outside, and the window was nailed shut. When Navarro eventually bought the house and was finally able to investigate properly, he found not one but two rooms that had been walled off at some point in the home's history. Inside the space were the eerie remnants of a long-forgotten past, including a vintage soda bottle, a pre-war saw, and a collection of toys that Navarro believes are at least 50 years old. Playing on the hidden aspect of the space, he turned it into a secret playroom for his daughter. As chilling and mysterious as the discovery may seem, Navarro said he was happy to learn it was there and turn it into a functional space. These recent stories lend credibility to local folklore claiming that St. John's is littered with secret subterranean spaces and tunnels, many that are still waiting to be discovered. Strange Ancient Graves 
Archaeologists discovered one of Europe's oldest cemeteries in 2016 on a hilltop near the German village of Gross Fredenwald. Dating back some 8,500 years to the Mesolithic period, it contained nine human skeletons, five of which belonged to children younger than six years old, including a six-month-old baby. At the time, Europe was populated by nomadic hunter-gatherers, making it rare to uncover multiple Mesolithic graves in one place, as forensic anthropologist Bettina Junklaus told National Geographic. But this cemetery was used for over 1,000 years, until around 7,000 years ago. The burials are also oddly situated in a place where the soil was rocky and hard, making digging difficult, and with no nearby sources of water, making it a less-than-ideal location for a settlement. Archaeologist Thomas Turberger, who led the excavation, took these factors as signs that the burials were deliberate and thought out, making it a true anomaly among other European graves from the time period. Perhaps the strangest feature of the site is a man who was buried standing up with bone tools and flint knives. Even more strangely, his body was only buried up to the knees at first, and the rest of his remains were left to decay before the grave was filled in. His skeleton shows that he was not accustomed to hard labor, indicating that he was a craftsman of some sort. Because he lived at a time when Europe's first farmers were settling in the region, his remains stand to offer new insight on this transitional period and the encounters between hunter-gatherers and those with a more agrarian lifestyle. But the biggest question of all is why was the man buried standing up? Researchers are hoping that a DNA analysis will help determine whether he migrated to the area from modern-day Russia, where similar standing burials have also been discovered. Amphibious Centipede For the first time in nearly a century and a half, researchers have identified a new centipede species in Japan. Dubbed Scolopendra alciona, the creature measures around 8 inches long and an inch wide, has nearly two dozen pairs of legs, and is amphibious. It's the largest known centipede in the Ryukyu Islands, and only the third swimming centipede among the 100 or so species that make up the Scolopendra genus. Scientists identified the new creature through genetic testing and by comparing it to other centipedes, and discussed their findings in a newly published study placing the species on the centipede family tree. The seven specimens they collected for their research were found beneath stones and observed preying on river shrimp. They are equally comfortable on land and in the water, according to the study, and will eagerly dive into the water to evade predators. A SETI co-author said that it's difficult to differentiate between Scolopendra species, who often contain only minor differences from one another. But the discovery of the new species is a promising sign of the untapped biodiversity waiting to be found in the islands, which scientists are eager to explore as the Earth's wildlife becomes increasingly threatened by climate change and human activity. As creepy as giant centipedes are, they are extremely popular in the exotic pet trade, even though they don't thrive in captivity. For this reason, it's all the more important to identify new species before it's too late to conserve them. Soviet-era bunker Geez, there's bunkers everywhere! As you know by now, it's not uncommon for people to discover fallout shelters in their homes dating back to the Cold War era. But it is rare to find one of these spaces left frozen in time, untouched since its abandonment. In 2017, an urban explorer known only by the YouTube name Shai discovered a small concrete building while wandering through an old factory in Russia. In the video, he can be seen passing through a pitch-dark corridor before opening two giant metal doors to reveal a room with working ventilation and electricity, chock full of old relics. Included among the items are gas masks, newspaper clippings, Photographs, tools, boots, medicine, clothing, and boxes full of equipment dating back to World War II. There are coats hanging on hooks, papers hung on the wall, and what appears to be a designated sleeping quarters covered in clothing and survival equipment. The bunker's location was never revealed, and it's safe to bet that the explorer wasn't supposed to be in there, so the details surrounding the site remain shrouded in mystery, leaving internet users to draw their own conclusions about why it's there and looks as if it were abandoned yesterday. Mass Sacrifice Near the coastal town of Juan Chaco in Peru, archaeologists made quite a grisly discovery. They were uncovering a site that once belonged to the Chimu people, one of the most powerful civilizations in the area. Excavations revealed a child's skeleton, then another, then another. Everywhere they dug, there was another skeleton. In total, archaeologists found 227 victims between the ages of 5 and 14 years old, and there are more that might still be uncovered. 
Around 500 years ago, these children were likely sacrificed in some kind of ritual. According to the BBC, this disturbing discovery came less than a year after two other archaeological sites in the country were found to contain the bodies of another 200 young victims of human sacrifice. Archaeologists reported that some of the bodies they found were so well preserved they still had their hair and skin when they were dug out of the ground. The children were buried facing the ocean, suggesting they had been sacrificed to appease the gods. The Chimu resided all along the northern coast of Peru and were one of the most powerful civilizations of their time, reaching their peak between 1200 and 1400, just before they were conquered by the Inca, who were then almost immediately conquered by Spanish invaders. The Chimu people worshipped a moon god, which they believed was more powerful than even the sun which is different from the Inca belief that the sun was the most powerful god. But just like many other South American cultures, the Chimu often practiced mass sacrifice as a way to appease their natural gods such as the moon, sun, and sea. The Mysterious Royal Tomb Archaeologists are very excited about a historical site in Turkey that has revealed a mysterious royal tomb and some massive stone gates. Brian Rose and his archaeological team in Gordion began excavations hoping to find the remains of a king. What they found instead was quite the surprise. When they opened the tomb, they discovered a young woman who had died in her 20s, along with an 8-year-old child and a collection of over 600 amber beads. These probably came to Turkey from over 1,500 miles away. As for the site of Gordian itself, it includes nine settlements and has over 4,000 years of ancient history. It was once the capital of the kingdom of Phrygia. This ancient kingdom might not sound familiar, but you have probably at least heard of one of its kings, King Midas, the one with the golden touch. Gordion is famous for its monumental citadel mound that's about 55 feet tall and lies in the middle of the ancient city that was once surrounded by stone and mud brick fortifications. Excavations have been going on here for about 75 years, but there is still much more to be uncovered. The Pyramids of Sudan Located along the east bank of the Nile River, 150 miles from the capital of Sudan, there are about 200 pyramids, significantly more than what you would find outside of Cairo in Egypt. However, the ancient pyramids discovered here are mostly in ruins, being swallowed by the desert and ignored by archaeologists and tourists. They were constructed by the rulers of the Kushite kingdoms when this area of the Nile Valley was called Nubia. The first capital was built at Kerma in 2500 BC and the pyramids here were inspired by the Egyptian pyramids. The Nubian kings built their own pyramids several thousand years later, with the first being constructed in 700 BC. The Nubian pyramids are smaller, painted black, and much pointier. But there are still twice as many Nubian pyramids standing today as there are Egyptian pyramids. The Nubian pyramids were discovered by foreign explorers in the early 1800s. An Italian treasure hunter named Giuseppe Ferlini showed up in the 1830s and demolished 40 of the pyramids at Moreau searching for treasure. And he found it, too. Hordes of jewelry, gold, and silver. More pyramids were discovered throughout the early 1900s by archaeologists. And some of the newest pyramids were found during excavations between 2009 and 2012 near a village named Sedenga. There were 80 pyramids here total, built in the 1st century BC. But who knows if there are others waiting to be found. Man's Best Friend Archaeologists have recently discovered the first image ever created of dogs being friends with humans in the Arabian desert. It is a cave painting that shows a hunter drawing his bow while surrounded by a pack of dogs. Some of the canines even appear to have leashes tied to the man's belt. What makes this really fascinating is that according to Science Magazine, the image was made over 8,000 years ago. This would suggest that humans figured out how to train and control dogs thousands of years before previously thought. Melinda Zeder with the Smithsonian Institution National Museum of Natural History has said that the cave drawing is the only indication that we currently have that early humans really did use dogs to hunt. Of course, more research will need to be done to prove the theory, but right now it looks like humans and dogs have been friends for much longer than anyone could have imagined. Do you have a close bond with your dog? What kind of dog do you have? Let me know in the comments below. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Francisco Costa and Cuchi N. Thanks so much for supporting Origins Explained. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new here and join the family. The Temple of Zeus New archaeological discoveries in Syria have unveiled secrets about an ancient temple dedicated to the god Zeus. Excavations in Kanawat were done with the help of the Sueda Antiquities Department, who picked apart the ancient temple to find small rooms 
doorways and a curious water channel that brought water flowing through the building. So far, only the eastern part of the temple has been fully excavated, so there could still be more impressive relics just waiting to be discovered. The Temple of Zeus was originally built by the Greeks and dates back to the 1st century BC. Kanawat was known as Kanatha by the ancient Romans, and it was a member of the Decapolis League of Trading Cities. At the time, it was extremely wealthy and powerful, demonstrated by the abundance of ruins here. The Temple of Zeus was just one building inside a great city of temples and megastructures. There is also a temple nearby built in the 2nd century dedicated to the sun god Helios. These were both impressive monuments back in their day but are currently nothing more than a few stones and a handful of crumbling columns. The city thrived until the Muslim Arab conquest. Then it began to disintegrate and today it is now considered a poor village. Students and the local Department of Antiquities are hoping to uncover more before everything is destroyed. Mysterious Jade Figure A mysterious jade cylinder was recently recovered from a cemetery that has archaeologists baffled. The cemetery was built for elite members of an ancient Neolithic society that flourished in China during the 3rd century BC. The spectacular jade relic may hold the secrets of one of the earliest societies to ever live in China. It depicts some kind of humanoid figure with an elaborate headdress riding on the back of a horrifying monster with claws and bulging eyes. The identity of the humanoid is currently unknown, and nobody can quite figure out what kind of monster it is. It could be a shaman or a god, or he could be riding some kind of early rendition of a dragon. The jade artifact is currently sitting in the Zhejiang Provincial Museum. It was found at the site of Langzhou and predates the earliest known Chinese dynasty of the Shang, who ruled during the Bronze Age in the 2nd century. Judging by this artifact and other pieces found here, including ceremonial axes and wine vessels, Archaeologists are convinced that whoever crafted these artifacts prospered at least 1700 years before the Shang Dynasty and were far more sophisticated. And yet there is almost no trace of them remaining. Archaeologists found proof of huge rice paddies, old fortifications, and a system of earth walls and moats. But other than the strange artifacts depicting even stranger monsters and humanoids, they really left no clues behind as to who they were or what they believed in. Ancient Graffiti there is an ancient settlement in India called Kiladi. A recent discovery could just change history by revealing that this settlement might be 300 years older than previously thought. Experts have found a unique script inside the settlement dating back to the 6th century BC. To understand why this is important, it's critical to know that after the first ever urban society in India declined, known as the Indus Valley Civilization, it's generally believed that the second wave of urbanization occurred in the Gangetic Plains. But with the revelation of this new script, the second wave of urbanization, which eventually led to the prosperous societies of the Indian subcontinent, started in Kiladi. The old dates don't align anymore. Organic material on six samples were sent to a lab in Florida, which then used accelerometer mass spectrometry to date the deposits between the 6th century BC and the 1st century AD. Archaeologists identified 56 pottery shards with markings thought to resemble the Tamil Brahmi script, a precursor for the Tamil script used in India today. They also found hundreds of graffiti markings and symbols that look like the evolution of the Tamil Brahmi script, all of which proves that the script is older than commonly believed. Ancient graffiti is changing history. Archaeologists also discovered ornaments of gold, gems, agricultural activity, walls made of brick, and houses with surprisingly advanced designs. The evidence shows an extremely early culture that survived on the barter system without money. Basically, ancient Kiladi had been in the pre-stages of society and is one of the first to be prosperous in India. The oldest mummy. While mummies might make you think of ancient Egypt and pharaohs, the earliest examples of artificial mummification did not come from Egypt, but the ancient Chinchorro culture that lived at the very edge of the Atacama Desert between Peru and Chile. These people lived here for around 6,000 years. They began mummifying their dead sometime around 7020 BC. They figured out how to do it naturally, using the dry and arid conditions of their desert, the driest place on earth, to preserve their dead. It would take them around 2,000 years to begin artificially mummifying corpses. According to Guinness World Records, the earliest known Chinchorro mummy modified using artificial means is that of a child that was discovered inside the Camarones Valley and was mummified back in 5050 BC. 
Over the next 3,500 years, these people evolved their mummification process in some very unique ways before ultimately giving up the practice in the first century BC. So how did the South American mummies differ from the Egyptian mummies? These people would remove the skin of the corpse and then take out the muscles and organs so that just the skeleton was left. They would then rebuild the corpse using wood and plants before ultimately sewing on a layer of clay skin and then adding a layer of ash paste. They would also cover the head of the mummy with a special clay helmet. In this way, they managed to preserve much of the body using natural materials. To give you a bit of a comparison on the oldest mummies in the world, the oldest Egyptian mummy only dates back to 3000 BC. That's about 4000 years later than the Chinchorro culture. Ancient Fingerprints A mysterious set of ancient fingerprints were just found at an archaeological site in the United Arab Emirates. Dating back 3,000 years, archaeologists discovered the mysterious prints fossilized in some bricks. Located at the Hili II archaeological site in Abu Dhabi, and according to Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism, the fingerprints could explain how the ancient people in the area advanced their construction techniques. Ancient craftsmen apparently used their hands to make special indentations in mud bricks that they would pour mortar into which helped walls stay together and be stronger. These fingerprints are direct proof of these construction techniques. But mysterious fingerprints weren't the only things discovered here. This ancient site is famous for having one of the most sophisticated irrigation systems of the Old World. The system dates back to the Iron Age and is a testament to how cultures of the Arab world transitioned from hunting and gathering to a stabilized culture with more modern technology. Looks like people have loved leaving their handprints and fingerprints and mud and cement since practically the beginning of time. 19th Century Shipwreck Construction workers in Boston recently discovered the remains of a shipwreck in the Seaport District completely by accident. Who knew that construction workers found so many cool objects? The construction company, Skanska, was under no obligation to report the find, but contacted state and local officials just in case. That was nice! Joe Bagley, a local Boston archaeologist who was called to the scene, determined that the vessel was probably from the 19th century, definitely before 1880. Construction was put on hold, and Bagley and his team tried to work as quickly as possible to document the findings so the work could continue. Unfortunately, the ship proved way too huge and too fragile to be moved, but they were extremely happy to be able to document it. What they found was that the ship had run aground, and there had likely been a fire on board. Archaeologists think the ship could have been on fire as it was sinking. But how had the ship remained undetected for all those years? Those studying it believe that the ship had probably run aground. No one in the area had cared enough to take it apart, and it was eventually used to help fill in the shoreline of Boston, turning the mudflats into buildable land. It's extremely rare to find a shipwreck in an area that's been filled in, but researchers were able to get the entire blueprint of the ship. The team found barrels inside of the shipwreck that looked like they contained lime, the construction material, not the citrus, and that it may have been brought to Boston for mixing concrete and to make paper. Other than that, not much is known about what the ship had been used for. Archaeologists documented the wreck as best they could, building a 3D image of the ship. However, that hasn't helped them to discover the truth about what happened to the crew, what the rest of the cargo may have been, or what caused the ship to catch fire and crash into the shore. Archaeologist Bagley commended Skanska for understanding the significance of the wreck to the people and city of Boston, and delaying their project to allow the ship to be documented. The Sundarbans A team of archaeologists in India led by Dr. Fanikant Mishra have made a fascinating discovery in the Sundarbans. In case you don't know, this is a region of swampy mangrove forests in eastern India, with many villages and tigers that swim. But the history of the region is quite complex. The first attempt to map the Sundarbans was in 1764, after the East India Company took the area under their control. There was no proper government here until the 1860s, and only because a forest department was established. There is very little known about the ancient history here, other than it supposedly stretches back to the 2nd century AD. New artifacts found by Mishra and his team, including terracotta beads, figurines, and human remains, have shown the Sundarbans actually go back 500 years earlier than previously thought, to at least the 3rd century BC. But there still isn't a lot of information on the people who lived in the Sundarbans thousands of years ago. The area is so primal and natural that it's been difficult to find any proper archaeological evidence. 
but the few things that have been found show that original estimates were wrong and that the Sundarbans have been around for a very long time. People have been living and fishing in the challenging environment coexisting with tigers here for thousands of years. Ancient Greek Settlement An extremely ancient site discovered near the Greek island of Crete is forcing scientists to rethink how they see ancient Greek societal history. This site is part of a Minoan settlement in which scientists uncovered remains of shells that were used to produce purple dyes, as well as different types of jewelry. Archaeologists also discovered ancient fish tanks that had been used by the Minoans as part of a production facility for purple dye. During the late Minoan period, between 1800 and 1500 BC, almost 4,000 years ago, this purple dye was wildly expensive and a serious commodity. But the reason the discovery is changing history is that archaeologists also found copper vases, glass beads, and a wealth of gold jewelry, things made from bronze and silver, and things made of other precious stones. Archaeologists hadn't realized it before, but now it looks like the Minoans were masters of trade and accumulated a huge wealth by trading the dye they manufactured. It was all thanks to the purple that they got so rich and traveled so much. Ancient Chinese City The discovery of an ancient Chinese city may transform how we understand the origin of civilization in the region. Experts say the abandoned settlement recently uncovered in Zhengzhou dates back 5,300 years. What this means is that the ancient civilizations of China could be much older than previously thought. Ain't that always the way? Located in the Central Plains area near Henan, this area is extremely important in the development of civilization. The archaeological site covers an area of over 3 million square feet. The ruins themselves consist of villages from the Yangshao culture, which appeared on the scene over 7,000 years ago during the Neolithic Age. But until now, they were believed to be quite primitive. Finding an actual city complete with a complex defensive system, an inner urban center, and advanced urban planning suggests that they were actually far more advanced than anyone knew. Thousands of artifacts have been uncovered so far, including a carved boar tusk in the shape of a silkworm. There is evidence that shows that silk was being produced in the region over 5,000 years ago. There is also evidence that they had advanced knowledge of astronomy, with patterns and objects representing constellations like the Big Dipper. The Amazon Jungle Culture Archaeologists found a mound in the Amazon jungle that stood as tall as a five-story building and stretched on for about two acres. The mound was part of an agricultural background, with rice paddies and cow pastures. It was overgrown, there were people living nearby in the Peruvian city of Jaén, and it didn't appear to be anything important. It was just a mound. But when excavations began in 2010, archaeologist Quirino Oliveira suspected the mound was something more. The vegetation was cleared, and the archaeologists immediately found pottery dating back 1,000 years. Oliveira then discovered proof of architecture on a massive scale. The mound contained walls beneath the soil, some of them once standing 9 feet tall. There was even a staircase. By 2016, the mound was mostly excavated to reveal what was probably once a thriving superstructure, occupied by an unknown society 3,000 years before today. Here's the crazy part. Nothing this large has ever been excavated in the Amazon. It's simply unthinkable, and yet it's flipping the script on what is possible in the greatest jungle on Earth. Archaeologists now know that there could very well have been populated cities much larger and more advanced than anyone could have previously thought, hidden throughout the dense and dark forests of South America. What secrets do you think are hidden in the Amazon jungle? Let me know in the comments below. Stones older than Stonehenge Archaeologists have found over 1,000 strange structures in Saudi Arabia that they believe are older than both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid of Giza. Known as Mustatils, these rock formations made of piled up heaps of sandstone were found scattered over thousands of miles of desert. They were made between 8,500 and 4,800 years ago and contained the remains of animal bones that might have been religious offerings. People may have created these structures for ritual purposes in the Neolithic era, but we don't know exactly who these people were or what type of deities they believed in. They were probably designed as special places of isolation, according to Dr. Hugh Thomas, who worked on the investigation. The rocks create small cave-like structures only about 4 feet tall, even though they weigh over 1,100 pounds. They don't look like they were meant to keep anything in, like a fence, but to mark a specific space. 
but to be honest, nobody knows exactly what they were used for. They were first located in northwestern Saudi Arabia back in the 70s, and they didn't receive a whole lot of attention until just recently, when a team of researchers from the University of Western Australia decided to investigate. What they discovered is that these stones are far more complicated than anyone could have imagined. They had to use helicopters to fly over the region, as well as detailed ground excavations to find the total number of mustatils. It turned out there were many more than expected, with monuments being between 30 and 1,500 feet long. You can't really comprehend how large they are until you are actually there. They appear to be older than any other stone monument constructed by humans. Radiocarbon dating of a cattle skull found inside a hidden chamber inside a rock formation has revealed it to be around 7,000 years old. Such an old discovery will rewrite the way historians view the ancient people of the Middle East, who once lived in a sprawling wasteland of desert and grass, and practiced complex social rituals. Aztec Temple in a Maya City A new archaeological discovery is changing the way we understand how the ancient cultures of Mesoamerica connected with each other. It all happened when researchers discovered a hidden pyramid in the ancient Maya city of Tikal in northern Guatemala. Researchers found that the strange pyramid was part of a forgotten neighborhood made up of structures vastly different to any kind of structures found throughout the Maya kingdom. The structures were distinct, with features reminiscent of the old Aztec capital of Teotihuacan in what is now Mexico City. These two places are 800 miles apart, and many thought that the Aztec and the Maya didn't really communicate. What's even more fascinating is that a small replica of the square at Teotihuacan known as the Citadel was found in Tikal as well. According to archaeologist Stephen Houston from Brown University, the similarities in the details were stunning. What this new discovery means is that the Aztecs and the Maya definitely had more contact than anyone could have previously imagined. Considering the Aztecs basically had their own village in one of the greatest Maya cities, what some researchers have called a quasi-autonomous settlement, they must have had a pretty significant relationship. Thomas Garrison from the University of Texas, Austin, says that this newest discovery demonstrates how the ancient cities of the Americas were probably very similar to the cosmopolitan cities of today, with many different people living from many different backgrounds, and even with varying languages. So far, the research team has been able to estimate the construction of the Aztec settlement inside Tikal at being constructed roughly around 278 AD. This date is important because it was about 100 years before the king of Teotihuacan sent his general to kill the king of Tikal and take over the city. Ancient Skull Researchers have discovered yet another ancient skull in Ethiopia that dates back millions of years. Prior to this new discovery, the oldest ape-like human skull dated back 3.2 million years. The ape-like creature was named Lucy, and she was among the species that gave rise to the first early humans. Found in the same area of Ethiopia, this newly discovered skull is thousands of years older, dating back 3.8 million years. Considering the skull is so old, it's changing the way we see human evolution. This is so far the oldest fossil of any kind of early human ancestor found by scientists. This skull was discovered in two large pieces, which according to Stephanie Melillo, a paleoanthropologist from Germany, is unfathomable for a specimen so old. Professor Johann Hale Selassie, the researcher who discovered the skull, said he was very happy when he found it. I thought to myself, oh my goodness, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? And all of a sudden I was jumping up and down and that was when I realized that this was what I had dreamt. It was the scientist dream come true. All we know so far is that the skull belonged to a male from a species known as Australopithecus anamensis, the oldest known ancestral species of a group of creatures that came before our branch of the family tree known as Homo. Scientists are realizing that the evolutionary tree of humanity is significantly more complicated than what we know so far. The main reason for this is that the new skull and the skull of Lucy belong to two different branches of the same family tree, and scientists have figured out that they probably lived in Ethiopia at the same time for around 100,000 years before the older species went extinct. This shows that human evolution may not have been a slow trickle, but more of a violent and jerky uphill battle. Where did religion begin? Gobekli Tepe is a fascinating archaeological site in modern Turkey, specifically in the Anatolia region, 
which some researchers believe holds the very first place of worship ever made by humans. This ancient place goes back thousands of years. Built around 9000 BC, it lasted for 1000 years before the site was abandoned and buried around 8000 BC. For some unknown reason, humans that were hunter-gatherers came to this place and started a civilized society, developing a religion and using Gobekli Tepe as a ceremonial sacred space. This place may just be the first place in human history where humans began to honor a god. The structures are covered with carvings of mysterious symbols and wild animals, along with pillars with some human-like features. Hundreds of workers must have come great distances to help build this place. The more we learn about Gobekli Tepe, the more it changes our understanding of the ancient world. The stones once formed a huge open-air enclosure that would have been quite impressive. For a long time, researchers thought agriculture is what pulled humans together to begin society. But Gobekli Tepe is before agriculture and farming even started, meaning it may have been religion that helped form society, not agriculture. Temples and sanctuaries brought people together for worship. Those people would have needed food, and perhaps it was religion that brought civilization and agriculture, instead of the other way around. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The Saqqara Tombs New discoveries in Saqqara, Egypt over the past few months have been changing the way Egyptologists look at the country's ancient history. Located only 19 miles south of Cairo, the burial chambers found there have been significant. One of the most incredible finds was an inscription deep inside a burial shaft found last January. Archaeologists were able to decipher it and discovered that it said the temple they were excavating belonged to an ancient queen who had been unknown to historians up until now. This is Queen Nate, and she was the wife of King Teti, the first pharaoh to rule during the 6th dynasty. This was 4,300 years ago during a period known as Egypt's Old Kingdom. It was originally thought that King Teti only had two wives. The realization that he had a third wife who had her own temple is making historians go back and rethink what happened 4,000 years ago. According to Zahi Hawass, the most distinguished archaeologist in all of Egypt, Saqqara is literally rewriting history practically every day. Each building uncovered and each tomb excavated shows a new piece of history and rewrites a chapter of the story. Vikings in America A new discovery could rewrite the history of Vikings in North America. Using modern satellite technology and ancient Norse sagas, researchers have discovered what could potentially be the second Viking site in the New World. The location is a swampy peninsula that stretches from Newfoundland to the Gulf of St. Lawrence in Canada. It's an extremely remote part of the country called Point Rossi, and archaeologists were drawn there because they saw ground features that they believe were left over from the Vikings. And they were right! When they began their excavations, they quickly discovered a stone hearth likely used for working iron. This suggests the Vikings had lived in North America longer than previously thought. It also shows that there could be multiple Viking settlements across North America, especially in Canada. Until now, there has only been one confirmed Viking site anywhere in the New World. This, of course, is Lands Au Meadows, originally found in 1960 on the northern tip of Newfoundland. It was only a temporary settlement that was eventually abandoned after a couple of years. The truth is that most settlements will probably be quite similar. Archaeologist Douglas Bolander claims that there was a very brief colonization attempt by the Vikings that ultimately failed. But this newest discovery at Point Rosie could flip the script. Maybe Vikings did settle on North America for longer. But even if they did, what happened to them is still a mystery. Aztec Skull Tower When the Spanish conquered the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, they were terrified of an enormous tower of skulls, which was actually more humongous than previously thought. The Catholic Spaniards were shocked at the barbarity of the Aztecs and did everything they could to raise the city to the ground in 1521. But underneath the Templo Mayor lies Huey Tzompantli, the circular tower made from sacrificed human skulls, all stacked and mortared together. Dating back to the late 15th and early 16th centuries, the 16.4-foot diameter tower is dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war, sun, and human sacrifice. Like several other Mesoamerican societies, the Aztecs temporarily displayed freshly severed heads on skull racks called Zompantli, then transferred them to the tower, which was built in three phases between 1486 and 1502. 
First uncovered in 2015, archaeologists found 484 skulls, but over the years the tally has risen to over 600. At first, everyone thought they were the skulls of young men, mostly defeated warriors. But researchers were a bit shocked to discover that it also contained the heads of women and even young children, identified by their young teeth, which raises more questions about sacrifice in the Aztec Empire. Biological anthropologist Rodrigo Bolanos reported that this is very strange, and it is something we have no record of. Team members Lorena Ballin and Raúl Barrera said that the skulls likely belonged to warriors and sacrificial victims. Carried out with the purpose of renewing nature, human sacrifices were a sacred daily ritual in Mesoamerica. Barrera says they were all made sacred, turned into gifts for the gods or even personifications of deities themselves. Based on contemporary accounts of the city's capture by Cortés, researchers believe that the Huaytzonpantli is one of seven similar structures that once stood in the area that the conquistadors destroyed, but clearly not well enough, because archaeologists were able to find the circular structure underground in the Templo Mayor, giving us a clearer picture of just how enormous this tower was and the degree of sacrifice that went on in the city. St. George's Church in the tiny Czech town of Lukova, there is an abandoned 14th century church filled with eerie white figurines nicknamed the Ghosts of St. George's Church. The ghastly sculptures sit at the building's pews, stand in the doorways, and are gathered at the altar. Built around 1352, St. George's Church sits atop a hill amid Lukova's 708 residents. After the roof caved in during a funeral in 1968, the church was abandoned and its congregation began holding mass outdoors. Believing the building was haunted or cursed, people simply avoided it and left it to decay. The community eventually became interested in renovating the church but couldn't afford to do so. In 2012, local artist Jaco Padrava created the 32 life-size sculptures that currently occupy the building in hopes of attracting visitors. To sculpt the eerie figures, he created plaster casts of models draped in sheets. The statues resemble the German Bohemians who once lived in the region and who were expelled from the Czech Republic after World War II. Thanks to Hadrava's creations, the church has become popular among tourists and is actually receiving the funding it needs to carry out repairs and maintain the building. And while most people are excited to see the inside, some have refused to enter, according to caretaker Peter Kogel, who said the spooked individuals couldn't get past peeking through the doorway. Would you be brave enough to go inside? Do things like this scare you? Let me know in the comments below. Ashkelon Sewer Archaeologists on Israel's southern coast were forced to confront a disturbing reality in 1988 when they discovered the bones of nearly 100 infants in a late Roman early Byzantine sewer beneath an ancient bathhouse in the port city of Ashkelon. In what was the largest infant mass grave ever found at the time, the newborn babies were deposited into the pit shortly after death. None lived to be more than a week old, yet they all appeared to be healthy, lacking any signs of disease or deformities. Seemingly discarded on purpose, the deceased infants shared a final resting place with animal bones, pottery fragments, coins, and garbage. Unlike a collection of infant burial jars from the same period found nearby, there were no grave goods or other evidence of a respectable burial. The horrifying mass grave reflects the Roman custom of abandoning unwanted babies called exposure. Because the Romans did not consider newborns to be fully human, they saw nothing wrong with leaving an infant unattended and letting the gods decide their fate. Infanticide was considered a parent's right, according to forensic anthropologist Patricia Smith, who told the news that girls were killed disproportionately because they were often viewed as burdens, while boys were valued as heirs and for their ability to support their family in old age. But strangely enough, the bones at Ashkelon were mostly male. But why? Based on erotic pottery fragments and a sign found at the site that says, Enter and Enjoy, archaeologists believe that the bathhouse the sewer is situated underneath doubled as a brothel in what was Ashkelon's red light district. Prostitution was common in ancient Rome, and the babies were likely the unwanted children of women who worked at the establishment. Female sex workers were in higher demand than males, and if prostitutes decided whether to keep their babies based on the assumption that their children might eventually follow in their path, it could explain why there were more boys in the sewer. Headless Viking Burial Pit In 2009, archaeologists discovered a burial pit filled with dozens of decapitated skeletons of young men near the seaside town of Weymouth on the English Channel coast. 
The massacred headless bodies were buried naked and in a tangled mess, with their heads stacked neatly to the side. Covered in telltale signs of violence, including deep cuts to the skull, jaw, and neck, it's clear that the group was taken captive and executed by a more powerful enemy a thousand years ago, who struck multiple blows to the victims' heads before hacking them off entirely. Other injuries, including sliced fingers, show that the men tried to defend themselves as they were mercilessly slaughtered. Radiocarbon dating put their deaths between 910 to 1030 AD, a time period marked by frequent battle between the English and the Vikings. But researchers were initially unsure who the brutally beheaded men were. An analysis of teeth from 10 of the individuals revealed that they came from different parts of Scandinavia, thus confirming their identity as Vikings, and that most of them died in their teens or early 20s. By examining climate-based isotope ratios, researchers ruled out the possibility that the men came from England and identified Norway and Sweden as possible places of origin. One of the deceased may have even come from north of the Arctic Circle. While the English often lost battles against the Vikings, the gory discovery shows that the intruding raiders were not always victorious. Aral Kum Desert Ship Graveyard the Aral Sea was once the world's fourth largest inland sea and was home to a thriving fishing industry. During the 1960s, the Soviet Union diverted the rivers, feeding it to supply water for cotton and rice fields, causing the sea to dry up and leaving behind a poisonous, salty wasteland now called the Aral Kum Desert. Straddling the border of modern-day Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, the Aral Kum Desert is littered with rusting fishing boats that were deserted when the Aral Sea shrunk and its salt content reached toxic levels, killing all of its marine life and leaving the entire fishing village with nothing. Today, the sea is a tenth of its former size, and its fishing industry is a distant memory marked by the eerie, decaying trawlers. The abandoned ships are accompanied by derelict buildings that were formerly part of the once bustling harbor city of Moynak and other busy seaside towns. Along with the shrinking of the sea, the surrounding populations have also drastically reduced, with most leaving for better opportunities. The remaining residents are plagued by health problems from the toxic dust that blows around. There is a growing effort to revive the Aral Sea, which is once again being fed by the rivers that were cut off from it. Its salinity has decreased and fish have returned, but there is no knowing whether the sea will be restored to its former glory and submerge the depressing sight of rotting ships. Frozen Sacrificed Children Around 500 years ago, three Inca children aged 15, 7, and 6 were chosen for the gruesome honor of being sacrificed to the gods. We still don't know why certain people were chosen over others or what qualities they had that made them the chosen ones. As part of the ancient ritual known as Capacocha, the oldest spent around a year being prepared for her death. Dubbed the Yuya Yako Maiden, the teenage peasant lived under the guidance of priestesses, increasingly ingesting alcohol and coca, the plant from which cocaine is derived, and enjoying elite foods like maize and meat. When it was time to die, the children received copious amounts of drugs and alcohol, possibly to pacify them and make them more cooperative with their impending fate. They were led to the summit of Volcán Yuya Yako in what is now Argentina, where they died peacefully in the freezing weather. In 1999, a team of researchers ventured high into the Andes and discovered the deceased children, who were remarkably preserved thanks to the frigid, high-altitude conditions. Their hair, skin, and clothing were intact, bringing a human element to their deaths that does not usually come with ancient remains. Chewed coca leaves were found in the Yuya Yako maiden's mouth, and the lice in her hair was still visible. There were no signs of violence, an otherwise common feature of Capacocha sites, indicating that the kids were left in a drug-induced stupor or were perhaps even unconscious and quietly slipped away. Textiles, pottery, and gold, silver, and shell statues surrounded the trio. Today, the mummies are on display at the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Argentina, where guests can see them firsthand and attempt to wrap their minds around what happened. Early Chemical Warfare After capturing Antioch in 256 AD, the Sasanians laid siege to the Roman city of Dura Europos, an important trading center of the ancient world in what is now Syria. The invading Persians dug several tunnels beneath the city's outer wall, while the Romans countered their efforts by excavating tunnels to intercept the enemy. Nineteen Roman soldiers and one Persian soldier died in the skirmish. 
Archaeologists were perplexed about the extreme imbalance of casualties when they first excavated the site in the 1930s. Why only one Persian versus 19? While the mystery technically remains unsolved, fresh insight from a 2010 study suggests that these Romans were among history's first chemical warfare victims. Treating the battle site like a crime scene, archaeologist Simon James re-examined existing records and noticed that the soldiers' dead bodies were stacked at the intersection of the Roman and Sasanian tunnels. It appears as though the Persians used the corpses as a barricade, enabling them to light the enemy section on fire while remaining safely on the other side. Residue samples and sulfur crystals from within the tunnels further indicate that the Sasanians heard the Romans approaching and threw highly flammable sulfur and pitch into the blaze, inundating the opponent with a choking gas that turned to sulfuric acid in their lungs and suffocated them to death. Meanwhile, the off-putting fumes probably caused any Roman soldiers waiting to enter the tunnel to think twice. Once the fire burned out, the Persians retrieved the freshly dead bodies, added them to the growing pile of corpses, and collapsed the Roman tunnel. Because the team that originally excavated the site filled the tunnels back in, it's unlikely that experts will ever prove this theory, but all signs point toward chemical warfare being the catalyst that secured a Sasanian victory. Burlington Bunker A 35-acre underground property in England, known as the Burlington Bunker, was kept a complete secret from the public until its declassification in 2004. Unbeknownst to even the local population, it sat 100 feet beneath the churches, homes, and cobblestone streets of the quaint market town of Corsham in Wiltshire. Built in 1955 during the Cold War era and designed to enable government employees to continue working in the event of a nuclear attack, the shelter was bomb-proof, radiation-proof, and poisonous gas-proof. The Burlington Bunker was equipped to accommodate up to 4,000 central government employees at any given time, and for up to three months with no outside contact. It was supplied with water from a nearby underground reservoir and even had a treatment facility to make the water drinkable. Designed for both working and living, the Burlington Bunker contained kitchens, offices, laundry facilities, supply rooms, cafeterias, and a hospital. There was also a television studio that would enable the government to broadcast public messages if the need arose. A pneumatic tube system facilitated correspondence within the complex, which was also home to England's second largest phone exchange for 30 years. Measuring over a mile long, the bunker had over 60 miles of roads and a secret rail line connecting it to the main railway. But the facility was never used, and by the time it finally closed, it was being run by just four Ministry of Defense employees. As it sits frozen in time, its future remains uncertain, with some fighting to preserve it while others believe it should be repurposed. Mass Child Sacrifice Between 2011 and 2019, archaeologists unearthed the remains of 269 children and three adults from the Chimu culture at the Juan Chaquito Las Llamas site in northeastern Peru. The individuals died over 500 years ago, sometime between 1400 and 1450, in the largest known child sacrifice ever found. Local pizzeria owner Michael Spano alerted archaeologist Gabriel Prieto after human bones began emerging in a vacant lot near his home. How creepy is that? Excavations ensued, and Prieto quickly noticed that the graves were unlike typical Chimu culture burials. Instead of being positioned upright, according to custom, they were laid on their backs or curled up on their sides, and many had cut marks on their sternum and ribs. While pottery and other grave goods were conspicuously absent, the children were buried alongside llamas and alpacas, which were extremely valuable to the Chimu people as a food source and for transportation. Like the children, the animals were killed via a cut across the sternum. The Chimu culture is shrouded in mystery, complicating researchers' ability to determine precisely what happened on the horrifying day when the children were massacred. With no written records left behind, Archaeologists must rely on physical evidence and observations that the Spanish recorded after arriving in the region. And until the mass grave was discovered, there were no signs that the Chimu sacrificed children. Experts suspect that an altered climate, including higher seas, heavy rains, and severe effects of El Niño, may have ravaged the civilization's economic and political stability, causing the Chimu to sacrifice some of their most valuable assets, namely children and animals in a desperate plea for relief from the gods. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn about more shocking archaeological sites, you know where to go. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.